Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. What are we looking at? We're looking at a repeated reverberation. Can't really say I'm a fan. Pretty difficult to pull off, situational, you need something to go with it. And costs a lot of mana to get a good effect out of this. So I think I'm gonna pass up on it. Ringleader Goblins is not really a supported tribe for draft, there's just not enough goblins to make it work. And uh, so we're basically looking at the two remaining uncommons, which are both pretty decent, although they do commit us to a two-color pair right away, which isn't ideal, since they don't really keep us very flexible. These aren't splashable cards. You really need to be like Boros or Izzet if you want to play these. But if you do, then the power level's definitely there. Both uh, pretty solid cards. And then looking at the commons... There's nothing that really jumps out as, like, pick me. There's some okay cards, like Octoprophet, Unsummon, Vulture, Vile if we can get a Weaponsmith, even the land. Our cards I'll play, but I don't want to first pick those. So I think in this case, since the power level of the commons is pretty weak, I would rather just gamble on one of these uncommons. And we haven't drafted a ton of white decks since they were usually pretty bad, mostly because of the bots, but... Maybe just in general, because white isn't the best color in drafts, so I wouldn't mind experimenting with Vanguard. But uh, the Stormkin might be slightly better than the Vanguard in terms of power level. It's close. Alright, we'll take the Stormkin. Alright, second pick. What do we have here? Some pretty decent uncommons. Uh, since we're best of one, we're not looking at the Drake. But the Mask is decent. The Howling Giant's pretty solid. As a curve topper, what else do we have? I do like Goblin Smuggler quite a bit, and it would keep us in the same color as a Stormkin, so that's nice. And Siphon's okay, some okay green cards. But I think here the cards we're looking at are Smuggler, Siphon, Immolation, and Giant. Uh, Mask and Smuggler keep us in red, so they get a slight uh, preference over Siphon and Giant here, I think. Basically, Mask versus Smuggler, I think, at the end of the day. They're both fine cards, Mask has a bit of elemental synergy, has a bit of synergy with like a Go Wide deck, could play well in Red-Black, where there's a bit of a sacrifice theme with a Sanitarium Skeleton, for example. And of course, if we end up in an elemental-themed deck, then uh, we already have the Stormkin, Mask would be another elemental, so it has a bit of upside there. Smuggler, on the other hand, gives us another evasive creature. We saw in the previous draft that uh, having a plan for when there's a board stall in Limited uh, is pretty important, and the Smuggler gives us that plan alongside Stormkin. Plays great alongside Lavakin Brawlers, which we could easily pick up in a Blue-Red Elemental deck. So yeah, both cards are pretty decent. We'll go with the Mask. Alright, could have had a second Goblin Ringleader, but again, I don't think uh, you'll often end up with enough Goblins to make that work. So what do we have in this pack? Best card overall. This pack's pretty weak. Like, Isolation's playable, but it's not even exciting. There's like a Foot Soldier if you get enough of them is okay. Raise the Alarm for the Go Wide deck is a solid 2-drop. Sprite's playable, Scorpion's fine. But there's nothing that really jumps out. So, what are we looking at? There's Kelden Raider, there's Sprite. Yeah, that's basically it. It's like, we could still pivot into another color combination. But for now, I don't really have a major reason to like jump into white for a Raze Alarm or a Foot Soldier, for example. We have a red card and a blue red card, so we're a bit more committed to red than we are to blue. So if it's close between, let's say, Kelden Raider and Sprite, then we would maybe favor the Kelden Raider, unless Curve plays a role. There's a lot of factors to consider, as always. I don't mind the Sprite, just being an evasive creature. Could maybe pick up some uh, Fairy Miscreants and have a bit of a flying theme. Kelden Raider would be fine, helping us discard lands in late game to prevent flooding and just being kind of a beefy 4-drop, although there are a lot of 3-powered creatures floating around that can easily trade for Kelden Raider at a uh, lower cost. So it's not the best. I think I'll take sprites. Alright, so no blue or red cards that I really want to take here. Sage's Road Denizen can kind of be its own game plan. 
if we had seen some fairy miscreants, then the denizen would maybe be a bit more appealing. Uh, best card in the pack, probably the Fen Lurker. Vulture's fine, Tranker's okay. So maybe Black is open, and we should move into Black instead. I think I'm just gonna take the Fen Lurker. And then... Uh, see where we end up. I'm not gonna miss out on a denizen too badly, I don't think. Alright, so now we're seeing a bunch of red cards, another sprite. Do have to start kind of making a bit of a decision, like which colors we think we're gonna end up as, so we don't waste too many picks. But it's always a good idea to stay flexible in the first couple picks, and not stay too married to our first pick. So it could easily be any of the the Grixis colors still, if we open some bomb in another color. Could still make a, a switch to a completely different uh, set of colors here, but we'll see where we end up. So I don't think Dragon Mage is a consideration. So it's basically Smuggler, Reduce to Ashes, or another Sprite. The Hammer's not particularly great. Maybe as kind of a sideboard card, maybe if you have some Weapon Smiths to help you with the cost, but 8 mana is just a bit too pricey for the effect. So yeah, Reduce, Salt Removal, Smuggler. We've kind of uh, given the Smuggler explanation a little bit earlier. Our deck, right now, the way it looks, is most likely gonna want to be some sort of blue red evasive tempo deck that uh, tries to get the opponent dead pretty quickly. So having either a Sprite or a Smuggler would be a nice addition. Of course, Reduce gives us a bit of removal for those larger creatures. So again, all three cards have some merit. I think I prefer the red cards over the Sprite in this instance. All right, another pretty close decision. We'll go with the Reduce Ashes. Ooh, and there's our Lavakin Brawler that I was talking about earlier, which would have paired well with Smuggler. We had the chance to pick up two Smugglers, so we went with Mask and Reduce instead. It might still be the pick. It pairs well with Mask, it pairs well with the Stormkin, and just a fine card by itself. The other option, I think, is Sleep Paralysis as an okay removal spell, although, yeah, it's not the most exciting removal, and sometimes playing a threat can be better than playing an answer. I think I'm leaning Brawler over Paralysis just to make sure our deck is proactive enough with enough threats and hopefully we'll pick up a Smuggler later. I have seen Smuggler's wheel before, we'll see whether that's still the case. Alright, not much here. Still see some okay green cards in the pack, but overall pretty lackluster remaining uh, picks here. Could just take the bow in case we end up with a Weaponsmith, we might be blue, so we can get access to the bow more easily. And if we have enough evasive creatures, then the bow can be pretty useful as well at picking off smaller creatures. So here we can consider the Scorch Spitter if we think our deck is going to be aggressive enough. Usually with Scorch Spitter you either need a ton of elemental synergy to make it worth it, or have ways to get the Spitter through for damage. So like a Goblin Smuggler, if you have some pump spells, so cards like that basically to combine with the Spitter, otherwise it's usually not worth it, unless you're like a hyper aggro low curve deck, and you just want to get efficiency for your mana. Uh, otherwise there's Vile to go with the bow in case we pick up a Weaponsmith. Probably not too interested in a Crab or a Convolute. We could be that hyper aggro deck that wants the Spitter. Vile I'm probably only going to play if we end up with the Weaponsmith, which would be pretty good alongside Vile, but, you know, still not the end of the world if we miss out on one here, since we could pick up another one. I'll just take the spitter, just in case. Got the same decision here. There's also rip scale if we want to go over the top with a 6-drop. Having a curve stopper is useful. Menace is a nice keyword to have in this type of deck. Or we could just go for the vial or spitter again. You know, if we have a critical mass of spitters, then we could maybe get something going. So I think I'll just take it again. Alright, wow, we wield a Smuggler, so that's amazing. Pairs great with Spitter, Lavakin Brawler. And could take a Sea Serpent as a random curve topper if we end up in blue. Could take an Anticipate. Probably not gonna play either. Alright, so Blue Rat seems like a pretty good place for us to be. Uh, any chance I play any of these? I don't think Befuddle is great in this archetype. I guess it's okay alongside like a Lavakin Brawler if they try and block. <laughs> I imagine putting a hammer on a Scorch Spitter. I guess it's a nice mana sink. 
I'll take it for the memes, but I don't really intend to play it. Got a befuddle anyway. Alright, so we are pretty solidly in red, probably blue red, but if we open something amazing in black, I can easily switch even green or white, depending. Alright, didn't really open anything amazing. Lotus Fields is marginal at best. So what else do we have? We've got a Disfigure, but might as well just take the Shock in red. Frostlings would be pretty decent in this deck, since they're pretty aggressive. And this both puts a creature in play, taps something down, and is an elemental for the Lavakin Brawler. Probably still gonna go with the Shock, but definitely hoping to pick up a Lynx at some point. Ooh, nice. Hmm. Risen Reef, why do you show up? So, Risen Reef is obviously busted, but another Stormkin would be amazing for deck too. Boreal Elemental also are lurking. This might throw off our draft a little bit if we try and take the Risen Reef, since then we need to make sure to pick up enough mana fixing. Uh, can't rely on the green mana fixing, so we'll have to pick up some dual lands, some Evolving Wilds, which is going to be tough. Another Stormkin just fits in our deck perfectly. Doesn't require any additional uh, setup. So I kind of hate opening the Risen Reef here, since I just wanted to build a nice synergistic blue-red deck. The problem here is that we can't even make the argument that we can go like red-green, since it's not like our blue cards are really splashable. Alright, we'll take the Stormkin. Alright, now probably reduce Ashes. Had we taken Risen Reef, we would probably take the Evolving Wilds here. But another reduce seems fine. Just have our creatures on the early turns and then kind of clean up with our expensive removal. It's usually a good game plan. Another Smuggler looks great. How good is Warden? I mean, Warden's pretty solid too. Doesn't really benefit the Stormkins. Uh, got a bit of synergy if we pick up like a Boreal Elemental or an Air Elemental later. Kind of prefer the Smuggler, to be honest, since if we have double Smuggler, we can easily play a double score spitter and then Smuggler can just target the spitter to get in for two right away. It just gives us a better late game with the Brawler as well. Yeah, I like Smuggler. And Marauder's Axe could be okay. If we have enough mana, we can like target one of our creatures with the Smuggler and then still equip it with the Axe to get in for two extra damage. Pack Mastiff would also be an okay two drop. Although between Double Stormkin, Mask, and Sprites, it's not like we're really lacking in the two-drop department. But it's also a card that plays well with the Smuggler, since we can pump it after making it unblockable. Axe does play well with these small evasive creatures like Sprite and Stormkin, since we can just equip them and get in a ton of damage in the air. So both cards are good. I think we prefer both two-drops here over the Raider, since we want to keep the curve nice and low. I think I like Axe. Well, <laughs> punished a little bit, I guess. I think I would have preferred one on one. Do I still take the axe? I could also consider the airstrike. This is potentially main deckable. If we want to keep the curve low and play like a 15 16 land deck, then could maybe sneak in an airstrike as an efficient removal spell. Our plan does rely on our flyers getting in for damage, so getting rid of small flyers from the opponent can be useful. The major issue with airstrike is that it's only three damage. So it doesn't deal with Boreal Elementals, for example, which uh, are pretty common as well. Double X would also be reasonable. Probably still play a second one and then just prioritize evasive uh, flyers. I think I'll take Axe. Alright, Weaponsmith looks decent with a bow in her deck. Could pick up a vial later and it helps us uh, equip the Axe as well and just cast Axe. Don't think this is a Bone to Ash deck, anticipate this kind of filler. Let's take the Weaponsmith. Alright, now we could have our Airstrike if we want it. Probably better than Convolute here. And we might even Maniacal Rage. Fire Elemental, bit of synergy with the Brawler. Overall, not the most uh, exciting 5 drop. I might play Maniacal Rage, I don't think we'll play the Cryptic Caves. Alright, probably don't need a second airstrike. How good is Raptor? It's pretty mediocre. Can, like, ramp it out with a Weaponsmith. One Toughness is 
dying to any opposing bows, which isn't great. Eh, might play Convolute. Alright, we'll take this now. I'll make chat happy. Alright, so moving into the last pack, what are we looking for? More smugglers, more Lavagan brawlers, more uh, small flyers, basically. Maybe a vial of Dragonfire to go with the Weaponsmith. Some Chandra's Outrages would be nice. Second bow, maybe. How about a third Stormkin? Oh boy, in the same pack as Risen Reef again? Why you gotta do this to me? But yeah, at this point we're solidly in the Stormkin camp. I would also love to get a Lavagan Brawler, but I think a third Stormkin with our double Marauder's Axe makes a ton of sense. So we'll take that here. And... Right, I guess I'll take another score spitter. Although, never mind, Pattern Matcher seems pretty great with Triple Stormkin. And do we have any other duplicates? Double Smuggler. Yeah, Matcher seems pretty good. Alright, could take a second Sprite. Unsummon would be decent in our deck. And another Reduce, although we already have two. Mastiff would be okay. It's probably between Unsummon Sprite and Ashes, which doesn't really narrow it down. Second Sprite would be another target for the Pattern Matcher as well, which is nice. Uh, we have double Marauder's Axe to equip it. Yeah, this one's close. Like, our deck could struggle to deal with larger creatures, especially above 5 Toughness that reduce can kill. So having access to Unsummon as a nice tempo play is uh, pretty good in this deck. Having a second sprite, more evasive creatures, more pattern matcher targets is also great. I think we're taking an unsummon here. And now we can have our sprite and eat it too. Probably not eating the sprite. Uh, Aeronaut would also be okay. It's just a 3-2 flyer. Because um, we're presumably going to be the aggressor more often than not. So the drawback of Aeronaut not having flying in the opponent's turn is uh, not that bad. And a 3-2 still hits pretty hard. But if we want to play a low-curve deck and have more pattern matcher targets, then Sprite makes a lot of sense. Let's take the Sprite. Ooh. Cliffs is actually pretty insane in our deck, because if we want to play a low land count, then there's always kind of the issue of not having the right colors of mana, but uh, Cliffs helps with that. Second Weaponsmith is tempting too, but we only have the one bow at the moment, so it's not like we're getting much with the Second Weaponsmith. Yeah, I'll take the Cliffs. Like, Act of Treason could also fit in, the Gate would maybe be playable, Kellen Raider would fit in too. But I think the mana fixing is more important, since we'll definitely have enough playables, but... We also want to make sure we can cast our spells. Triple Smuggler, why not? Seems great. Infuriate would also make the cut if we got it, but I think Smuggler's a bit better here. And not much here. Take an uncommon for the vaults. Octoprofits probably makes the cuts. So here we can have our act of treason. We could take an anticipate. So we can basically already build our deck here. So Spitter's definitely making the cut with triple smuggler and with brawler to synergize with it. Um, all the two drops look good. I think maniacal rage also plays well with the spitter, so I might play that too. Um, bow with the uh, Weaponsmith seems okay. Double Axe is gonna make it. I'm not sure about the Convolute or the Befuddle, these are maybes. And the uh, Serpent is also a maybe, especially if we play a low land count. So, let's say we take these three cards out of the equation for a second. The Airstrike's also a maybe, I guess. So we've got four maybes here. Uh, puts us to 24, we've got a land, 23. If we want to play like 16 or f even 15 lands, then we need like one or two more playables. Oh yeah, Mask plus Act of Treason is a nice synergy. If we have five mana, we can steal something, equip the Mask and sacrifice it. So I kind of like it. How good is Wands? Do we have any way of 
sacrificing artifacts. I don't think we do. We don't have the three mana goblin. Otherwise, that's a synergy to look to as well. Zephyr Charge is probably going to be unneeded since most of our creatures already have some sort of built-in evasion. Probably just take the wand anyway, but probably not playing it. Ooh. We wield Reduce and Calderator. Definitely like both. We don't have money for drops, but we do have cards like Marauder's Axe, which we can play and equip on turn 4. So it's not like we don't have anything going on in the later turns. We can always pump the sprites. So we have some mana sinks, but um, yeah, having a 4-3 body isn't bad. Reduce is just another nice removal spell to take out other big flyers. I think I'm leaning reduce. It's close. No chance for playing a Prismite. Alright, so I think we ended up with a pretty nice low curve blue reds. Aggro deck here. So we'll need to make a couple of cuts. I think I'm okay playing a low land count, which probably means I'm cutting the serpents. So the only question is 15 or 16 lands. One probably doesn't make it. Not sure about the airstrike. Befuddle and Convolute are both questionable. And everything else seems fine. So if we cut these three cards. Still need to make one cut, so I could just cut a land. I think 15 is probably okay. The mana distribution's a bit skewed towards red. But um, still need a healthy dose of blue. So I don't think we can go below 8 blue sources. Otherwise it's going to be difficult to cast our Stromkins and Sprites on turn 2. So now we basically have 8 red sources, 8 blue sources. Like, we probably want like 15.5 lands in this deck, but I think I would rather go with 15 and 16, because we can easily function on 3 lands for an entire game, and flooding could be a real concern. If we were to play 16 lands, what would be my last cut? Maybe the Act of Treason? I think this seems fine. Alright, reduce to Axe as it is. Alright, um, we're lacking a 2-drop creature basically, but we do have Spitter into Maniacal Rage, which could do some damage. So yeah, I'll keep, and then hopefully we'll uh, pick up another cheap creature at some point. What is this, Guilds of Ravnica draft? Yeah, I think we go for it. So now I could attack, and if they double block, I can unsummon the Soulmander to eat the Inquisitor. Alright, they're just gonna gain one. Take it, and then we can probably just play the Weaponsmith for now. Hopefully no murders in our future. Protection from black, that's manageable. Alright, I mean, I guess I'll attack with the spitter. Now they could triple block and then the unsummoned play no longer works out. Alright, so now we can make the unsummoned play. I think we would rather, rather kill the Inquisitor than the Apostle. So I'll unsummon the Apostle and kill the Inquisitor. Could also let this happen, to be honest. And just play Sprite, play Axe. The trade isn't bad on face value. Like it's a 2 for 2, we got an, a ton of damage. And we keep developing our board with a Flyer, because they'll eventually get to trade with the Spitter. So maybe just developing the Sprite right now is worth it. On the other hand, if we draw land for Act of Treason, 
then we could maybe keep getting in with the spitter. Yeah, I'll let the trade happen. Another Soulmander, oh boy. And a Burglar. Yeah, the Burglar's kind of gonna be annoying. Stormkin's not a bad draw, though. Eh, let's just equip uh, Sprite, I guess. Alright, we do also have the bow in our deck that we could find with uh, the Weaponsmith, although we couldn't play it out right now, so it would take a while before we get that going, but yeah, bow is definitely a great plan here with all these one toughness creatures. What is this? This figure? Pattern matcher, so yeah, now we could search up the bow end of turn. Uh, Both two mana to play, one to equip if I'm not mistaken. So if we search it up now we can play it. Yeah, we could play the Pattern Matcher, that's true. Thanks to the Weaponsmith, get a second sprite, that's not bad since that blocks a Burglar. Yeah, that's probably better. And then um, hopefully we'll draw into a third land at some point so we can more easily get the bow and play it right away. Yeah, the Pattern Matcher just lines up well against the Blood Burglar, which is the important thing here. No attacks, that's great. Draw another Reduce, it's a little awkward. But yeah, we're just gonna hit for three, Pattern Matcher stays back. And then end of turn we'll search up the bow. Could have also considered like upkeeping the weaponsmith in case we drew the bow, but if we drew the bow then we could have played and equipped the bow, which would have been better. So the weaponsmith doing some work this game. Opponent also stuck on three lands. All right, so yeah, time to go for it. Can even keep up on summon. <laughs> All right then, I'll take it. All right, so can kind of see there how even though we were, we were kind of stuck on two lands, our deck still functioned pretty well. Our deck can play quite well with just two or three lands. Eventually we want to get up to 5 for Reduced Ashes, but we're not in a hurry, typically. Alright, the sand's beautiful. Petition to change the deck name to Reduce 2 Axes. It's not bad. Sprites. Can just smuggler and smash. Oh. Right, sprite gets him for one. So now what's stuck on single blue? Don't really want to trade Smuggler for Lynx, also don't want to unsummon it. So I can just go Sprite plus Axe, no attacks. I think I prefer playing the Axe since the Mask isn't really doing much on this board. Whereas the Axe is probably going to be put to good use next turn. And we might have to unsummon as well. Yeah, that's aggressive. 
No blocks. Fencing ace. So, I'm guessing this one summon's gonna be useful against a fencing ace that might get equipped. Pacifism, alright, so opponent's got some nice cheap uh, cards here and nice answers. Let's see what we can do. Mask, of course, also a great answer to the fencing ace. So we might just kill it that way. Yeah, I can just go mask. Plus we can also sack the Stormkin now with the mask later. So that's a good use for it too. So yeah, let's play the mask. Kill the fencing ace. And I could keep up on summon. I think I would rather just pump the sprite here. And then probably makes more sense to equip the sprite than the smuggler. Or does it? Because next turn I could uh, target the sprite and then move the axe onto it afterwards. Whereas if I put the axe on it now, then I have to first move the axe somewhere else and then re-equip the sprite. So it might actually be better to equip the smuggler here. Pump this, attack for 5 or a 6. And then next turn... I can do the trick where we make Sprite unblockable with Smuggler, then move the axe onto it and hit for a bunch. Yeah, we could also unsummon our own Stormkin, but right now we only have a single blue, so it's not too appealing, but good one to keep in mind. Alright, Aerial Assault, our Smuggler, that's too bad. So, opponent with all the cheap removal. Ooh, we can pattern match Stormkin. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, let's go for it. And do I offer the trade for sprites? It's probably fine. No, yeah, it's just attack. So might as well do it now. Yeah, that is true. I guess we could attack with a 1-2 sprite. They block with their sprite, we just don't pump, and then the mask could finish off the sprite afterwards. That's uh, reasonable too. So, close call there. Not sure what the ideal play is. Still being stuck on single blue kind of hurts. Otherwise, we could have made some interesting plays. But for now we'll just uh, Stormkin equip, and then put mask on the pacified Stormkin, I guess. And I think we keep Pattern Matcher back, since it holds off the links. And then we might be able to use and summon profitably as well. We'll see. There's also an argument for equipping the 4-2 Stormkin in case they go and kill it. But I'm kind of hoping they're out of removal at this point. Uh, squad Captain could have been a reason to trade last turn anyway. But yeah, opponent's just dead. Two Mask plus Stormkin. Sweet, so... Pattern match on Stormkin coming up uh, big again. Our deck is pretty sweet. Nice low curve. 15 lands, multiple Stormkins. Alright, let's keep on going. Alright, another nice opening hand. Turn 1 Spitter, turn 2 Stormkin. That's what dreams are made of. And even a shock to back it up. Oh boy. Can even shock if they play like a Leafkin Druid and play another Spitter. Season of Growth instead. Our deck has no chill. Straight to the face. Eh, skeleton lines up pretty well against our Spitter, sadly. And a vial for the Stormkin. Alright, alright. So now what? Attack with Stormkin, play Spitter Sprite, and maybe next turn shock the Skeleton, get an attack with both Spitters. It's probably the line. Mm, 
All right, taps out for Thief. That's good. So now we don't have to worry about a pump spell as much. Although our opponent did have a slight pause on turn one with Forest Up, and the only thing that can be is Smite of the Masses. So we'll have to watch out for that. Can just play a Lavakin Brawler for now. Don't think we're sending the Spitters. Can just attack for three, play Brawler, and then set up for next turn. Yeah, I guess it could also be Veil, but they're probably not playing that Ambassador one. Yeah, we probably don't mind too much if Thief attacks since they're taking one damage, which starts adding up here. One of our better draws is like a Goblin Smuggler off the top, since then Brawler's just lethal by itself almost. Mains face kills Stormkin. And does Thief attack. Stays back. Ooh, Bo. Bo could do some cool stuff, since that means that... If Spitter attacks into Skeleton, it still trades at least. That being said, we might be better off just sending Sprite and Brawler if they try and Might of the Masses. We can just Shock and Response. So we can have a pretty efficient turn here. So I'm expecting a Might of the Masses to happen. Alright, they might just jump, which is also fine. So I do want to pump, since I'm going to do that either way. I plummet instead, that was unexpected, fair enough. Alright, so they're just jumping with the skeleton, that's fine by me. And then I get to play another sprites, keep up shock. Don't think we're in a hurry to shock the thief. Keeps the card on top. I don't think I'm shocking end of turn. So I'm probably just gonna attack with Brawler plus Sprite, bump Sprite. Keep up shock. Yeah, it's probably fine. Ooh, Smuggler, that was a great top deck. Now they're probably just dead. Do we value keeping up uh, shock or pumping the Sprite more? Doesn't matter. Are they dead if we attack with everyone? Let's see. Smuggler the Brawlers. Brawler attacks for 5. Spitters is another 2 damage. Sprite is 8. So I guess we're 1 point short of lethal, but if we pump the Sprite and the Shock is lethal next turn. So I think I would rather pump with the Sprite now and then just have a lethal burn spell in hand. And they would have to gain life with like a Pulse of Marasa which I'm not going to put in their hand. Alright, take seven. And they're dead to the sprite, they're dead to the brawler, they're dead to the shock. So, let's see how they get out of this mess. Yeah, and I still suspect our opponent has a Might of the Masses in hand. Attacks, no attacks. Alright. Let's get in there. And now they're dead on board, and if they go with Pulse of Marasa, we can shock them in response. So they're extra dead. Sure. Yeah, there we go. They had it. We knew.
All right, so we're three and zero. Not bad. Let's keep it up. All right, gotta update the name here. Small uh, editor's notes. And another beautiful opening hand featuring Spitter into Stormkin into Smuggler. Man, I'm liking this deck. Oh boy. It's the mirror. Our opponent figured it out too. And do we want to trade? I mean, most of our creatures have haste, so I'm not going to be blocking anytime soon. So maybe I don't want to be taking two per turn from the Scorch Spitter. If they're less aggressive than our deck, then we could just take it and try and race. Since we do have Smuggler to make our Spitter unblockable in the future. If they're equally as aggressive, then the trade could be fine. Yeah, we're probably more aggressive than they are. Come on. Who are we kidding? All right, they're blue-red as well, not a score spitter. All right, maybe I have to take that back. I think I'm still attacking. I mean, I could also just keep a Stormkin on defense. That's pretty bad if they have a shock, but it might be the play here. We don't want to be taking four just to get in two damage. Yeah. All right. We'll see what they come up with to answer the Stormkin. Nah, they did have the shock. That's kind of the worst case scenario here. All right, I think I'm gonna do the same this time with the Smuggler. Keep it back. Like it is close because all our creatures have haste, so we can basically get in for an equal amount of damage. But they're not guaranteed to have an answer for our two toughness creature every time. And then the spitters just stop attacking, and then once they stop attacking, we can kind of take over with our evasive threats. It feels bad not to attack with a haste creature, but I think that's fine here. Also, our hands picked up some expensive cards in the meantime, so we kind of want to prolong the game anyway. Octoprofits for mana, this is 5, this costs 4 to equip. So we don't necessarily want to be the aggressor anymore. See what happens. Hopefully they can't remove the smuggler. That's fine. Did we successfully stop the spitter attack? We did. Alright, great. Alright, so now smuggler can make spitter unblockable, play Octoprofits. Alternatively, we can play Stormkin. But since we want to keep a creature back on defense, I would probably keep the Octoprofit back scrying to maybe a fifth land or some more action. They could attack with a Digger, probably fine trading Octoprofit for Digger. Alright, so Sprite's okay. Uh, if we keep Sprite, we can go Sprite plus Stormkin. Sprite's a great blocker for the Spitters. And the question is whether we need a fifth land before then. Probably not. But I think I do keep the lands for a reduce the turn after. So who knows what will happen here. If they can deal with Octoprofit, we could be taking a ton of damage. So we could regret uh, making the attack last turn. But we also get to deal a bit of damage back, so we'll see. Ooh, Outrage. Well, that's one of the better ones. Opponent is down to one card in hand, though. But we're down to five, essentially down to three with double spitter in the opponent's uh, side. So, yeah, we gotta be pretty careful. But for now we can just go Sprite plus Stormkin. What do we attack with? Probably just a spitter. Yeah, I think we need to keep everything back. 
All right, well, hopefully we don't get burnt out. So our opponent definitely matched our aggression this game with the double spitter opening and a bunch of burn spells to back them up. So as it turns out, maybe trading spitter turn one would have worked out a little bit better. Uh-oh. I think that's uh, an issue. So they can make one spitter unblockable, hit us for essentially two. I guess we're not dead since we can reduce the smuggler next turn. So we're basically at one life here. And then can we afford to attack with anyone? We do want to pressure them so we don't give them infinite time. Uh, I guess a Stormkin could attack. And then we've got... Sprite in front of Spitter, Spitter in front of Spitter and Smuggler in front of Digger. Yeah, I don't think we can play around another removal effect here, otherwise we're just dead. We're pretty close to killing the opponent as well here, but... Not quite enough to kill them right now. If they have any more haste creatures or removal spells, we're dead. Ooh, winged wards for the redraws. Moats, that doesn't matter. Looks like we're alive. Alright, so, now what? We can play Weaponsmith... Play Axe, Pump Sprite, and attack for 4 in the air, setting up lethal for next turn with Axe and 2 flyers. Is there any way we can deal lethal right now? We can deal 8 damage. If we make Spitter unblockable, equip the Axe onto it, Pump Sprite, so we're too short. So we could also just play it extra conservatively and just attack with uh, Stormkin, and then next turn we can just get in those 8 points of damage and just keep back an extra blocker. It's probably safer. Yeah, let's do that. So just send a Stormkin. And then next turn we can deal 8. Alright, well, they didn't top deck last turn. Let's see if they top deck something this turn. Of course, if they draw into like a large flyer, then we could regret not getting in those two extra points of damage. But now we can potentially beat a single removal spell. And yeah, there's a Boreal Elemental, so if we had attacked for two last turn, instead of uh, playing around removal, we could have had lethal, now I'm not so sure. So now what happens? Opponent can block one of our two flyers. Smuggler can still smuggle. So we might be too damage short. Does a Weaponsmith do anything useful? We do have a bow in our deck. That doesn't help. Well, does that help? So yeah, I can, I can smuggle, then equip Axe, and then just rely on Sprite as a chum blocker. I don't think we can force them to trade Elemental for one of our flyers. So I think... I'm smuggling the Stormkin. Then equipping the axe. Hit for four. And then hope the sprite can chum block the boreal elemental. And then next turn we should have lethal. I guess that's true. There was no point in making Stormkin attack as opposed to the spitter, since the Stormkin at least has flying on defense. Yeah, I should have probably just made a spitter unblockable instead of the Stormkin, since it gets in the same amount of damage, but it leaves us with an extra flyer. That being said, if they have a single removal spell, we're still dead here, I think, since spitters put us to one and they have four lethal attackers. So I don't think it makes a difference, but worth pointing out if the board state was slightly different. 
Right, opponent's digging for those burn spells. Let's see if they can find them. They're dead if they don't. Land, that's promising. Are we dead? Can jump with the sprites. This was an intense game, no matter the outcome. We're essentially at one life here. Yep. That's getting blocked. Wow. Oof. What a game. That was a, an awesome game of magic right there. Sweet. 4-0 with uh, reduced to axes. Well, seemed to be going pretty well so far. Let's keep it up. And yeah, another great opening hand. Two land, Stormkin, Sprite and Mask as early plays. If we draw land, we get to smuggle, and at some point we might reduce. Blue whites, flyers typically. They might have a raise the alarm here. So if we smuggle into a raise the alarm, they could trade, which isn't ideal, but it is the most mana efficient play. So I think I still go for it. They might just have like an anticipate for all we know. No raise the alarm. And no anticipates. Just the sprites. Which they can trade for either one of our creatures. Unless we play the mask first. So that seems tempting, and then we also get to play a spitter. So now if they go and pump the sprite, it's going to have one toughness and dice to the mask. They still get to absorb two damage and get rid of our elemental token. But uh, that's a fine trade for us. Opponent already down to 10. Hard cover. That's unexpected. It's a pretty good combo with the sprite though, giving it extra toughness so they can pump it more. So now we would love to draw on summon or lands for the reduce. Can also just make our creatures unblockable with the smuggler at this point. How about an act of treason? Yeah, that seems pretty good. We could wait until we have the mana to Act of Treason plus Mask. But that's going to require two more mana, so... Let's just do this. Does it work, or do they have a counterspell? Could be a God's Willing. Moment of Heroism. That seems questionable. I guess... Yeah, not sure what they're going... to do here. Alright. Are they pumping the sprite for us? <laughs> Is this a... Uh, honorable uh, seppuku? Alright, GG's. I'll take it. Yeah, so far I'm not really regretting passing up on those Risen Reefs. Even though it hurt my soul a little bit. All right, so far so good. All right, so we're seeing a little bit of the downside of uh, a low land count in a two-color deck, but we were going to mulligan this hand anyway, since we have two five drops and only two lands, so that's fine. Our deck should mulligan pretty well, since we don't need all seven cards to win the game. And yeah, this is a perfectly fine keep. Which four drop do we get rid of? Probably the Octoprofit, since we can pattern match either one of these. 
And we've got a beautiful starting hand here. Stormkin into Smuggler into Pattermatcher. Is it time for murder? Thief instead. So what do we do about a thief? We're stalling out a little bit on lands here, so... Our hand is clunking up a bit. Don't really have a great answer to thief other than just trading. So I might as well attack at that point. And maybe the life loss starts adding up. Because if we stay back, they could just remove the smuggler and then we're sad since we missed two damage. And now they're also taking one. All right, black green. Hopefully no agonizing siphons in our future. Tracker, it's okay. And a bow. Bow doesn't do much, so we're just attacking for two with Stormkin. We may or may not trade Smuggler for Thief, we'll see. And then I could either Weaponsmith or Sprites. Weaponsmith also helps us with Pattern Matcher, since it can tap for two for the Artifact. Uh, Sprite gives us another evasive attacker, which is useful as well, if we want to kill the opponent quickly. So Weaponsmith kind of sets us up better for a, a longer game with the Pattern Matcher. Sprite tries to close out the game a bit faster. I think I like Weaponsmith. It also blocks the tracker for what it's worth. If we draw an untapped land, we can even Pattern Matcher and play the Stormkin right away, which would be the dream. So I think we're trading at this point. Since... Thanks to the Pattern Matcher, Sprites, we should have enough evasive creatures even if the Smuggler dies here. And otherwise the card draw could start adding up. I mean our opponent is already down to 10, I think I'm still blocking. And if they spend their turn using a pump spell I'm not too upset. The Smuggler would be useful later with the Lavakin Brawler, I would rather just focus on our Flyers. Now the downside is if we pattern matcher and they kill Stormkin in response, we don't have anything to pattern match, whereas we did have another smuggler. Alright, spider, so now we're a little sad. Although the bow still lets us trade for the spider at least. Having two Stormkins doesn't matter when we only have one bow, so I might as well equip the bow and attack right now, but I guess we also want to pattern match before the Stormkin trades. So it's a tricky spot. Let's just play Brawler, play Bow. And then next turn I can potentially equip Stormkin and Pattern Match before attacking. And maybe the Brawler gets in too, we'll see. On the one hand we're happy that the Thief isn't drawing a million cards for the opponent anymore. On the other hand we're sad that we lost the Smuggler. So not even sure what uh, the correct play was. Of course we didn't know about uh, Spider yet. Pattern Matcher hopefully doesn't match Spider. And uh, does match Spider. Now we definitely need to draw Smuggler. Well, <laughs> sometimes magic isn't too difficult. Can just Smuggler the Brawler, attack for four. We can play the Pattern Matcher afterwards, but that's probably fine since I might want to Pattern Match Smuggler instead of the Stormkin at this point. And then I can equip the bow, but I'm not sure that matters. Since I don't really want to attack with a Stormkin into the spider, even if it's equipped with a bow, since we just want to keep as many elementals as possible to pump the brawler. But I guess I'll equip the Stormkin here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have a third Smuggler in the deck. We only have the one Brawler. So our opponent's down to six. 
they need an answer for the smuggler. Otherwise, they're just dead in a turn or two. We've got some draws that win us the game. If they don't answer what's going on. I guess a land also lets us pattern match and play smuggler right away. Which would help. So, should be in good shape. So, please don't kill smuggler. That's fine. And reduce. That doesn't do much. They're also keeping up 4 mana instead of running out the spider. So something's up. So I don't really feel like attacking into the spider with the Stormkin here. Um, let's just pattern match right now. There's a smuggler. I could have also gotten another Stormkin, that would have given us three elementals. I could have played Stormkin, attacked with both, as well as the Brawler, making it unblockable. And if they didn't have anything, uh, then I guess we would have lethal. But them keeping up for mana makes me a little bit uh, suspicious, so I would rather get another Smuggler. Would have been reasonable to go for that line as well. But this seems a bit safer to me. Having a backup Smuggler to break the board stall. Alright, opponent's down to two. I've got two smugglers to work with. And what did they have? Pulse of Marasa, maybe? Alright, so we wouldn't quite have had lethal. So happier with the extra smuggler here. So we got pretty lucky to top deck a second smuggler this game, otherwise we could have been in trouble. I think I'll just uh, trade here. What is this naming? A green? Let's just block here, I guess. Cutthroats. Alright, Axe, so can we kill them here? I can also play the Axe, but I'm one mana short of playing both Smuggler and playing and equipping the Axe. Of course I can pump the Sprite as well. We're at 12, are we at any risk of dying on the way back? We'll still have two blockers back, I think I'll keep the Sprite back and the Weaponsmith. Instead of running out the Axe with the Weaponsmith, just make these two unblockable. And then we'll have two blockers. At 12 life, that should be safe. Yeah, they could have an overcome and kill us, but I don't think we can uh, play around that. No real reason to move the bow. Alright, so... Overcome saves them, maybe some removal spells and life gain, but... Not much, and we don't need the Weaponsmith or the Sprite to win the game, so we're happy to chum block with those if we have to. Tracker's gonna go tracking, that's a good sign. Alright, sweet, we got there. Well, looks like we're already at 6-0, so this went pretty swiftly. Let's go. Alright. Probably a mulligan. And easy keep. Alright, so I want a spitter, I want a stormkin, I want a sprite, and I want a shock. So I guess act of freezing can go. Alright, blue-black, do they have the thief? They sure do. 
Let's just kill that. And the perfect curve continues into a Lavagin Brawler. And then just need to top deck a Smuggler, and that's game. Alright, Vulture's pretty good. They gain two life, not bad. Hmm, I guess now we can also just axe up the Spitter. Although, if we axe up the Spitter, then the Sprite can't attack. So, what's the best play here? I could also just play Brawler not attack this turn. That feels kind of bad. I could attack with Sprite and Stormkin, and then they might block Stormkin anyway. And then we still get to play a Brawler, and if we have to pump Sprite, we still get to play the Axe, even if we don't get to equip it. I think I like that the most. It's close. Right, they're blocking there, fair enough. But then we have more Elementals for the Lavakin Brawler, so it's not too bad. So, not the most mana efficient turn in history, but... I think it's acceptable. The problem there is if we equip the Spitter, then the Sprite can't attack, since we don't have the mana to pump the Sprite, so... Alright, so Moats, that's not too bad. So, I think I'll just uh, attack with Stormkin and develop the Brawler which can attack past the moat without any issues. Looks out of a murder. Nah, that's unfortunate, so... Now we're hoping to top deck a smuggler. Reduce ashes would be decent if they don't add any creatures to the board, and we still have good attacks. Act of Treason would not have been uh, ideal here. Alright, Siphons, luckily the brawler survives. But yeah, we're flooding out a little bit. So hopefully it uh, stops after this lands. Brawler hits pretty hard and our opponent is down to one card in hand. So one can hope. Ooh, reduce. I don't think we need to reduce right now. I'll let them chump if they want to, but then next turn we can reduce the moats. I might actually... yeah, I probably should wait on the Reduce in case they play a better blocker here. Alright, that one fits the bill. Opponent forced to chump. The reason to reduce end of turn on the moat is in case they have like a Fun Lurker to make us discard. But uh makes more sense to save it, I think. And we got rewarded and drawn from dreams, so they gotta find either removal or a chum blocker to stay alive. Hopefully it's just a chum blocker, and then the second card might be able to answer the brawler once they get access to more mana. But hopefully we'll top deck something in the meantime. It looks like sleep analysis. Alright, it's a pretty good answer. Alright, so Opponent's down to 5, we're at 21, so we've got a lot of time to draw one of our many creatures, haste creatures, would be preferred. But opponent still has a good card in hand that they found, Necromancer. Right, that stops smugglers, for example. But if we find a Stormkin, they're still dead. Not a reduce. Should we pull the trigger now? I think so. Because at this point we're just waiting to top deck something and I want to have as much time as possible to top deck so we should kind of reduce their clock. Don't know if there's an advantage to equipping the brawler, but sure. Uh oh. Well. Punished a little bit for that reduce, and now the Stormkin uh, isn't lethal, but our opponent will be forced to block it, so it's still a trade. And I think I do trade since 
Altamsis is one way of easily losing this game. I could have just kept uh, Stormkin in hand and maybe your opponent attacks and then we kill them out of nowhere. That could have been reasonable too. Although what's more likely is that our opponent just keeps Atamsis back and then starts looting every turn. And that wouldn't have been great for us. Alright. So I could double sack Brawler and the token to kill the 2-2. Or I can just axe up the 1-1 the here and trade. Opponent's also down to 5, so burning them out is realistic. And we also want to keep the 1-1 one, one in case we draw Smuggler. We have... how many Smugglers left? Three still. So there is an upside to not equipping the token if we draw Smuggler. We don't want to have the Axe on it since we want to make this unblockable. Yeah, I don't think I actually want to equip the token. But then again, we also... don't discourage an attack if we don't. Split a difference here. So they only send four, makes sense. And now if we draw the smuggler, the problem is we have to unequip the axe first before we can re-equip it, so we don't have the mana to put both axes on an unblockable elemental. But we can deal three damage to the opponent and then the mask can kind of finish them off. Unsummon can bounce her own brawler, so that's good. Can block all those pesky zombies. So we'll uh, just do that now. Don't have any good attacks. I guess I could consider attacking and just trading. Although trading for servants, not ideal if they have more of them. So let's uh, think this through. Now that we get to save the brawler, smugglers lethal anyway, so we don't need the token anymore. So I guess trading could be fine. Alright. And I'll equip with a mask in case they kill it. And if we top deck smuggler, we can smuggle, double equip, and they're super dead. Only need to equip once, I guess. Alright, hopefully they're out of removal here. They did have another Undead Servant, sadly. But they don't have any great attacks. Alright. Maniacal Rage. What does that do for us? Not exactly what we wanted to do. Because they can just double block. So yeah, I think we just gotta pass a turn here, sadly. Yeah, I guess I can equip one axe. Because again, we can smuggler, unequip axe, re-equip axe, and this is five by itself. Alright, let's see if we get there. I guess I'll uh, equip this one. Alright, sweet. So, yeah, it's possible this game that I should not have attacked with a 2-2 flyer with haste. In case our opponent attacked us with the Atamsis and then we could have killed them on the way back. I think it's still a close decision. Um, opponent did see one of those 2-2 haste flyers already, so they could have played around a second one. And we kind of give up on the opportunity to maybe make that trade if they pick up some removal. And Atamsis is a scary card to keep in play. Not sure if it's correct, but uh, yeah. We got there anyway, so that's what matters, I guess. Let's claim our prize. Got a Temple of Silence, pack one, pick one. It's between the Outrage and the Blood for Bones. 
Blood for Bones is nice, but it kind of is some sort of build around. You need some nice creatures with Entra Battlefield abilities for it to be great. It's still good in just kind of a regular deck, just kind of soul salvage a creature and put one in play. Still a pretty great card in uh, any deck that has a bit of sacrifice fodder, skeletons come to mind. Outrage, just a brutally efficient removal spell that also goes to the face, would have been much better than reduced ashes in our deck, even though the five damage did come up a few times where we needed the extra points over Outrage. And what do we have here? Thunderkin Awakener. The best combo with this is probably the four mana Scorcher that makes two tokens. Um, so that's, for example, one of the reasons to sometimes kill the token instead of the creature itself, so they can't reanimate it with the Awakener. It kind of depends what colors the opponent is playing, if they're playing black, of course, and you might not want to put the creature in the graveyard. So there's reasons to do different things, but Awakener by itself, not the most exciting card. It's kind of a build around. That being said, this pack is pretty weak. If you're playing best of three, Fry is pretty decent. Skeleton's always fine, uh, but not an exciting first pick. But uh, yeah, can always kind of try and build around the Awakener, but still not a card you usually want to be first picking. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.